And then we turn our attention to the Atlantic Basin. Models beginning to pick up on tropical activity in the main development region as we head into August. But the National Hurricane Center hasn't highlighted anything yet. Right. right? The uh, first wave that we've been watching from Africa, though, this is showing at least a small chance mm -hmm. that it could survive its long journey across the uh, still pretty hostile waters in mm -hmm. the Atlantic. Not so much because of the temperatures, but because of the winds and that dust. Let's further this discussion. I know you're intrigued. I certainly am. Let's bring in Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross. All right, Brian. All right. We talked to you yesterday, and not much has changed since yesterday, but still, as we mentioned, worth noting, worth monitoring what we could see try to move across the main development region. Yeah, we have to start getting interested because mm -hmm. August is right around the corner and things just on average start to pick up. So far, this season has seemed kind of like it's going to be normal-ish. Well, normal means things pick up in August, and we're seeing some signs of that here. Uh, not this week, but next week, and I'll show you more on that in a second. And we have something different here, <laughs> a little bit different than yesterday. Here's the disturbance that we were watching yesterday as it came off of Africa. Well, there's another one out here in front of it, so it's sort of a tandem situation. Not that that's going to change what happens downstream, but just a little bit interesting. Here you look at it close up, and we put the water temperatures on there, and you can see where the cool water line is here. It's in the 70s to the north, but this disturbance here and this one out here are over that path of warm water. So for now and for the foreseeable future, anything that comes off of Africa a little farther north is going to have a hard time and probably not going to develop. This is also where it's very dusty up in here. So the dust tends to shield the water and help keep it on the cooler side. But there is this corridor of very warm water here down to the south. And these uh, storms are going to, or, or systems are going to kind of track along that corridor of warm water. Here's the uh, satellite and then the computer analysis of the flow. And here you can see a circulation in here, kind of see a circulation in here. Now, let's look at the uh, computer forecast and remember that the dark green is the moisture. So here we have the moisture associated with this first disturbance, the one coming off we talked about yesterday, and here's the moisture associated with this one. Lots and lots of dry air here. So this whole conglomeration of moisture is going to head into dry air, and that's going to help keep it from developing. But in the short term, the thinking is that about tomorrow, these two will merge. So we have a cluster of moisture here, but look, surrounded by dry air. Again, that will help keep it from really getting very developed uh, this week. Here we are tomorrow. Now let's go through the rest of the week. And you see it's kind of fighting off the dry air. Doesn't really get organized. If anything, the amount of moisture decreases as we get toward the islands. But still, a surge of moisture coming through the northeastern Caribbean islands. This is about Saturday, plus or minus. But we have a disturbance in the atmosphere, and that's what is the precursor to any kind of system that might develop. Well, how about after that? So let's look a little forward in time here. And we're looking at the AI models now because it gives us a representation. But when we look at the other models, uh, the European model, for example, we get something like this. So we're only looking here. These up here are associated with a front, so we don't care about those. It's this group down in here, which is sort of a surviving out of that disturbance if it hangs together enough and moves up north of the islands east of the Bahamas, we'll keep an eye on that. And then as we go forward in time, so this is all the way a week from now, so don't look at the exact positions. It's the idea that we might have a disturbance in that area east of the Bahamas. And then look, the atmosphere gets much more conducive somewhere in this whole zone, from the Gulf all the way over to well east of the Bahamas and off the east coast. So we're just going to keep an eye as the atmosphere becomes uh, just more ready for storms to develop somewhere in this tropical zone, not too far from the U.S. Again, keeping an eye late next week, more than a week uh, from now. So that's why the National Hurricane Center says no to tropical development is likely for the next seven days. It looks like a better chance, not a likelihood, but a better chance after that. So late next week, we start paying attention. You mentioned the uh, conga line of all this activity out in the Pacific. 
yes, we have kind of a supportive atmosphere. Now, it's a combination of the thing we talk about, the MJO, and other factors making it very conducive in that zone from west of Hawaii over to include Central America and into the Gulf. Now, as we look forward in time, remember we've been talking about not this week, but way next week, which is like a, a far future when you're talking about tropical stuff. But the indications are that this is going to move toward the Atlantic and uh, be out here in the MDR and then generally in the Caribbean and the Gulf. So this is something we're going to keep an eye on, but this is mid-August we're talking about here. So say from the 11th or 12th on through mid-August. But that's when we would normally start paying attention to uh, what's going on in the tropics. So anyway, that's what we're looking at right now. It looks like a good week of uh, rest here. And then we'll perk up and start uh, paying more attention here next week. Guys? I'm, not a, I'm not one for stats, Brian. But hey, we're waiting on the D-name storm. And that doesn't happen till when, typically? Mid-August. Mm -hmm. So we're finally, because some have said, yeah, oh, it's right. above average. Because mm -hmm. we're C, you know, past the C-name storm. But when you look at the factors, I guess, if there were big limiting factors, and you just detailed it, what would you say over the next 48 hours, 72 hours that we should be paying attention to with this tropical wave? A dust perhaps could be well, a Well, the main factor. thing is the dust, dust and dry air, but yeah. we also have hostile winds. We have these dips in the jet stream coming down, so it's not uniformly uh, conducive across the Atlantic. In fact, it's, we have all these th negative factors for yeah. now. But when we get up to past this week, then kind of a high pressure area lot, which has light winds, kind of settles over somewhere around the Bahamas, Florida, uh, maybe well offshore, and then eventually maybe in the Gulf. Depends on the model you look at right now. So we're not trying to pin anything down, just saying it looks like conditions could become more conducive maybe eight, nine, ten days from now uh, based on a consensus of the various models but but certainly nothing specific yeah talk talk about knowing and needing to know that forecast weeks in mm -hmm. advance here we are brian norcross appreciate <laughs> yeah, exactly. it fox weather hurricane specialist brian norcross for us